Good morning, I'm Reverend Karen Lemouton and I'd like to welcome you to Preston Ribble's Circuit Service for the second Sunday in Easter. It's been a joy sharing in providing worship as a circuit staff team in these new times of being church in a different way. It's made us all step out of our comfort zones and venture down very different pathways, something all Jesus' followers had to do in the days after Jesus' resurrection. So come walk with him. Come talk with him. Come worship Jesus, our risen Lord. Let us pray. Lord our God, we gather as your people. We come to walk a journey together, to talk and to share along the way, to meet and to know Jesus and to share in his story. Help us to marvel at all that Jesus has done for us to approach his throne with the knowledge that Jesus died for us and rose again. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pause and be still for a moment to reflect on this wonderful knowledge. Be still. So may we recognise you now as we join in worship. Grant that we too may meet with you, walk with you, talk with you, so that our hearts might burn within us as we go on our way rejoicing. Open our hearts today and every day to your living presence and life-giving power. And we pray that you will accept our heartfelt sorrow for the times when we do not walk with you. Amen. Today's reading is come from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 and 36 to 41. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, 
repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many words he warned them and he pleaded with them. Save yourselves from the corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. I'm not saying I don't believe the stories, but I don't see how Jesus could just come back to life. It seems impossible. They did say they were 100% sure they saw Jesus. They do seem convincing, but I'm not sure. I just want to see him again. Me too. You both seem a little sad. Is everything okay? We are a little sad. We were just talking about our friend, Jesus. Who? Jesus? Mm. I'm not sure who you mean. Have you not heard about Jesus? Everybody's talking about him. The miracle maker. Yeah, he was amazing. He healed people. He fed people. And most importantly, he seemed to just love everyone. But why are you so sad? Well... They actually sent him to die. There was no reason. Yeah, some of our friends went three days later to the tomb where they buried him. And an angel told them that he wasn't there and that he had come back to life. That sounds like a good news. If this was true, then it would be. But we can't be sure. We haven't seen him. But the Bible did say this would happen. It is all part of a great plan. A plan? Tell me more. Why don't I explain it to you as we head to MS? There is a lot of ground to cover. Ah, home at last. This can't be the end already. Would you come and share some dinner with us? Of course. I love to eat and chat with friends. Father, thank you for this bread. What? Jesus? How did we not recognize you? It's you. It's all true. You've come back to life. You're right. I am back. Now go and tell everyone the good news. Jesus is alive. Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. On the same day, we find two of the disciples going off to Emmaus, a village about seven miles from Jerusalem. As they went, they were deep in conversation about everything that had happened. While they were absorbed in their serious talk, and discussions, Jesus himself came near and walked along with them, but something prevented them from recognising him. Then he spoke to them, What is all this discussion that you are having on your walk? They stopped, their faces drawn with misery, and the one called Cleopas replied, you must be the only stranger in Jerusalem who hasn't heard all of the things that have happened there recently. What things? asked Jesus. All about Jesus from Nazareth. There was a man, a prophet strong in what he did and what he said, in God's eyes as well as the people's. Haven't you heard how our chief priests and rulers handed him over for execution and had him crucified? But we were hoping he was the one who was to come and set Israel free. Yes, and if that were not enough, it's getting on for three days since all this happened. And some of our women folk have disturbed us profoundly. 
for they went to the tomb at dawn. And then when they couldn't find his body, they said that they had had a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of our people went straight off to the tomb and found things just as the women had described them. But they didn't see him. Then he himself spoke to them. Aren't you failing to understand and slow to believe in all that the prophets have said? Was it not inevitable that the Christ should suffer like that and so find his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them everything in the scriptures that referred to himself. They were by now approaching the village to which they were going. He gave the impression that he meant to go on further, but they stopped him with the words, Do stay with us. It is nearly evening, and soon the day will be over. So he went indoors to stay with them. Then it happened. While he was sitting at the table with them, he took the loaf, gave thanks, broke it and passed it to them. Their eyes opened wide and they knew him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, weren't our hearts glowing while he was with us on the road? and when he made the scriptures so plain to us. And they got to their feet without delay and turned back to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and their friends all together, full of the news. The Lord is really risen. He has appeared to Simon now. Then they told the story of their walk and how they recognised him when he broke the loaf. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the story of the Emmaus Road, those who are on their way home do not recognise Jesus. They do not know who he is, and yet it is obvious that Jesus knows who they are. As part of our reflection today, I have invited some members of our churches and circuits 
both the Preston Liberal Valley circuit and the Bank circuit to share in some of these reflections. And the first thing that they're going to do is introduce themselves and tell you their names and what they do. My name is Michael McGill. I am 14 years old and I'm a year nine pupil at high school. Hi everyone, my name is Bran, this is Dominic. We're currently in Slovakia. We came here for a week and we end up staying here. It's our second month. Because of this, the coronavirus. Because of the coronavirus. Yes, you're right, Dominic. Hi, I'm David. I'm Hannah. And we go to Ingle Methodist Church. Hi, everyone. My name's Laura. And for those of you uh, that don't know, usually um, I work for a housing association as an allocations officer letting properties. But due to the current situation, um, I'm working from home. Well, I'm working from Slovakia actually, as, as most of you know. My name is Doris Robinson and I am a nurse. I'm Liz. So we've got a farm um, and we produce eggs. We're producing ne nearly 120,000 eggs a day at the moment. But that's still not enough. The demand has uh, gone up. Jesus walks alongside us, knows our name and our situation, who we are, where we are and where we have been. And in the story of Emmaus, the disciples have been somewhere very hard. They have found the events of Easter difficult. The situation has affected them and they are hurting and confused and unable to find a way forward and so their response is to go home. I've asked some of our circuit members to share with you some of the things that they have found difficult during the time that we are experiencing at the moment. For the last few weeks I found it hard doing all my schoolwork at home and not seeing members of my family and my friends. And what I've been finding tough about lockdown is just the inability to meet in groups of people. It's great to have the Zoom and phone calls and video calls and things like that, but it's just not the same as being present with people or family. I've been missing seeing my friends at school. I've been missing seeing my family as well. I found it hard because we don't know what's going to happen in, in a few days or in a month time. One thing I found hard is um, social distancing from customers. When customers come to the farm, we try to be warm and welcoming and friendly. And yet we're finding ourselves stepping away, which doesn't seem right. It doesn't give the right welcoming impression. Another thing that I found hard is not seeing my church family. I've realised how important they are to me. Um, maybe we tend to take each other for granted, which is something to think about. Um, the real thing for me that I've, has been quite hard is um, just really the not knowing. So. For us as a family not being able to plan you know when can we book that flight back when are we coming home what are the next steps because obviously when we get home I've then to sort out other things um like working from home again um so for me that's been hard really the un the uncertainty of everything because I, I don't think i'm very good when i don't know something um it's much better when you know what's going on helps you cope better as well i think in the present time what i have found difficult is the uncertainty as our teams have been split we've been asked to go and work in different teams and that is where the lot of people have found uh, the uncertainty of what is in store but the main thing is that everybody has wanted to do and play their part to fight the coronavirus Eventually, in the Emmaus Road story, the disciples recognise Jesus. They witness his presence risen and with them. They celebrate who and what he is. And again, members from our churches 
are going to share with you where they have perceived God in this moment, here, now, in 2020, where God is working in our world. This is Jill McGill, and I just want to say that I know that God is with me each and every day. He supports and guides me when I'm having a bad or a negative day. And it helps me greatly to know that he is there watching over me. Even though times are difficult for everyone at the moment, we have been truly blessed with the lovely sunny weather and the signs of spring. And thinking about where we might have seen God in the situation, I think there's been some fantastic sessions online, services, Bible studies. But less obviously, I think, when people have come out to clap on a Thursday in groups with the NHS, that's really shown us a greater connection that we all have. And I believe that in that we've been seeing something of God in each of us. So I found myself relaxing and making my own vegetable patch. Dominic seeded some potatoes, as you can see. They're already coming out. And that's, this is the way, how I feel I perceive God in a new life. Something uh, turning from a piece of potato to a beautiful plant. Hopefully we'll have those. And getting stronger and stronger each day. So I wish everyone to stay safe and keep your heart open to yeah. each other. And welcome, close. welcome God in your life. And, and I'd say I've perceived God in nature. Um, it's a wonderful time of year, springtime. The leaves are coming on the trees, there's some lovely flowers, the birds are singing. Easter makes us think of, of new life and there is new life everywhere. Um, we're very fortunate to live where we do. Um, with the sun shining, the countryside looks beautiful. I've also perceived God in the smiles of strangers. People that you might see whilst you're out walking near home or somebody whilst you're shopping for food. People seem to be more friendly. Maybe because we're all in this together, it's it's bringing it's bringing people closer together, even though we can't be physically close. Um, in the middle of it all, God is close to us. God is always close to us. Um, and maybe if we are all close to God, then that can bring us all closer to each other. Take care everybody. I look forward to seeing you in the flesh soon, hopefully. Bye. Um, so I've just taken you to my field. So this is where I run every day and this is where I perceive God. Um, it really has made me think about uh, the world. Um, how the world has sl uh, slowed down, but um, despite that, you know, the particularly nature, nature is continuing. So this is my field where I run each, uh, I try and run each day. Um, and you really notice nature and I've been able to follow it as a, a run, watch it grow. And it reminds me that despite the fact that the world is, um, slowing down that there's still life going on i have perceived god from the very starting of it there was no fear or anything but i had the assurance that god is with me and he's going to see me through this in the end and at the same time i have felt his mighty hand and protection when i have looked after patients and been able to be a blessing to the team and to encourage them and to support them and I know in all this, God is in control. He's going to see us through this and everything is going to work according to God's plan and purpose for the kingdom of God. Amen. At the very end of the story, the disciples ran back, ran back to tell, ran back to share, ran back to proclaim. 
They had met with God in Jesus. They had witnessed to it. And these reflections that we have heard this morning tell us of that witness in being known, in hope for the future, in the revelation of the risen Christ. We too are challenged to go and proclaim the gospel of hope. As we go, get to the end of the Emmaus story, we remember that the reason the disciples recognised Jesus was because he broke the bread and wine. He shared in what we now call communion. And at the moment as a church, we are unable to do that. We cannot gather in our buildings and we cannot share as we normally do. It is a good symbol, but it is a symbol. What is most important is that we recognise Jesus in our hearts in our spirits and one of the things many of our Methodist friends have been doing over the last few weeks is engaging what is called spiritual communion. Spend a few moments in quiet reflection on Jesus' life, death and resurrection before praying. Jesus, my brother, who brought divine life out of human death, you are meeting us here and now in this place. We pause to remember that the one thing we desire above all others is for you to be with us. Though I cannot receive you in bread and wine, come into my heart and show me you were already there within me. By your love, lightening my darkness from within. Open my eyes to your sacred presence in each thing you have created and in every moment you give. As each of your followers does their part where they are, may we all to grow together in love and in richer, fuller communion. Make us one with you and with all who you love in every time and place. Help us to feel and to know that we are united as members of your body with all your people. May we share your risen life which renews all creation. We offer ourselves to you in service as an act of spiritual worship. Amen. I pray that as you continue to grow and know and understand the nature and the love of God, that you will be in communion with him. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, we praise and thank you that in the same way that Jesus walked alongside the two disciples on the way to Emmaus, so your Holy Spirit accompanies us on our journey of life. You turn our darkness into light. You are ready and waiting to receive our prayers. You are already at work in all situations because you are love. And so, Lord God, we hold up before you all those who are sick. all those who are suffering, all those who despair, all those who doubt that you are with them or doubt that you are doing anything to help. all those who fear death. All those who mourn. Lord God, may your new day dawn and the light of Christ show the way as we share in Jesus's resurrection and as we wait in hope for the day when your kingdom will come in all its fullness. And as we wait, we pray together in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we are stumbling in our isolation, our dreams and plans shattered, risen Christ, meet us on that lonely road. When we are unable to recognise your presence and feel baffled by confusion and our failure to understand, risen Christ, speak words of comfort and reassurance when we are delighted by startled recognition and overwhelmed by joy in your presence. Risen Christ, renew our confidence and hope that we may, even in our isolation, share your love with friends and with neighbours. May the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. God bless. Mm -hmm.